Hello, good morning. Conflict of generation. Dash the monopole of the willpower. What's the link? I know you probably we are sharing some ideas. Everybody is entitled to his own opinion. Again, it's my own opinion about the word conflict of generation. We hear this a lot. I don't buy it. Frankly, I disagree with this term. The conflict is existing, but not this is the source, or as people describe, they scratch the surface. Now, sometimes some expressions, they are just borrowed. We just use some words we don't even know. We don't analyze. We don't scrutinize. No, because they are the generation the next one, or our generation, is different than our uh, parents, grandparents. Therefore, the conflict is generation. Yeah, that is a conflict. When you say conflicts, that implies clashes, technology. Our technology is more modern, updated. Theirs is obsolete. This generation, the way they look at us, I lived in a time there was no such a thing. Today is more modernized. You know, the world lives in a, you know, live in a very civilized world and quickly yeah, civilized. You know, the technology has been civilized. That's that's how it is. As I said, everyone is entitled to his own opinion. Me, the words when I say conflict of generation, it's not because of the conflict of generations. There's just such a thing existing because of something else that we are going to see shortly. A kid is already victim of parenthood. When we say victim, parents, without realizing it, they try to see their image, their picture in their kids, without realizing it. During his early age, the kid is, you can say, a tape recorder. You know, there's a funny story about politician. They said they ask him, are you an Arabophone or Francophone or Anglophone? Then he said, I am Manitophone. You know, so the kid is already victim of the parenthood. You know. Where, where does it reside? Why it's a conflict? I am, uh, I want to see something in my kid. Where is the problem? I'm a rich person, I want to see my richness in the kid. I want him to be rich. Is that a problem? I have... I'm a highly educated person. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I want him to be, you know, highly educated. What is the problem? I don't know. Do you see this as a problem? Well, that's not the instinct that's going to answer this. An analysis. Patience. That's going to answer this question. The thing is, we don't understand in this world, modern world, all these universities, or what you study, etc. It's usually, it's a godless society. People speak about God, but it's just, you know, just verbalizing words. All all religions. Well, myself, I'm talking about monotheism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. You know, just words. But it's a godless society. I don't mean I am saying these people are heretic or like people, uh, you know, they are disbelievers. No, I don't mean that. I mean in their life, they don't accept the fact that what is your link with the Creator? They study theology. This is just a study. It's they study astrophysics. It's just a study. The study is the science is there and I am here. There is no liaison. 
when you tell people this, except few who accept this, what does it mean? Being voluntarily, willingly, worshipfully under God's supervision to give you your image. Because every newborn in this existence is different than the old. How can he find his uniqueness in this globality? All he is or all he does is transporting images. First is parenthood, then culture, then nationalism, and he is always lost. Now, do you see why generations are getting into drugs all the time? Worse and worse, more and more, without excluding any country. In the Muslim world, same thing. Why people are getting into this kind of like violent words, you know, offensive words, violent actions, everything. Although they study, a human being has big diploma, is highly educated, it doesn't matter. A behavior is something else. Early age. I am putting question marks, question marks, question marks. I create curiosity. Think about it. Leave that aside. We're going to go to heaven. The first time God went, you know, spoke to heaven and earth. You know, when heaven and earth were in pre-existence, nothingness. He brought them forth from nothingness into existence. Were there any kind of decision from their part? Was there any kind of like, let me think? There was receptiveness, submission. The verse he said, when God, he said, then, tumestawa il samai wa uh, translation for me is that little heavy. Then he turned to the sky and it was smoke. It's not he turns, it's not complete translation. And then he said to heaven and earth, you come voluntarily, willingly or unwillingly. They said, we come willingly. He said, come, that means to me. We're talking about a human being. Therefore, you are coming to the Creator. Your destination is the Creator. You like it or you don't like it. I'm talking about a transit, physical transit, or a mental transit, which is the intention. is going to the Creator. Now, considering another example on earth, when Hood said it, when God said it through the mouth of Hood, he said, every creature, every the creature is a dead but the one that is on earth, walking on earth, animal, human being, whatever. God is seizing them from the front. He said, God is a straight path. Take an example of an animal. You know, those horses that are, they want to train them. They are like wild. They want to train them. You seize them. If the animal is salvage, you know, the words is like wild going right and left. All the animal does is causing himself, himself some injuries. You're going, you like it or you don't like it. What a human being getting back to our, but what I would like to emphasize. Look, you're coming to God. God didn't use a monopoly. He didn't use a force, pressure. No, he gave you the choice. He said, eat here, you come willingly or unwillingly. For the person who comes willingly, that's the harmony of life. The one who doesn't come willingly, 
he's going to cause a conflict to himself because the existence is this. He's going to only touch abstract walls that he's going to hurt himself. The thing, my point, the willpower he left it to you, he did not, even though he's the creator. This is the first step. The second step is we coming from the creator to the angels and then to the prophet and then we go to the parenthood this is the creator how what he said you don't just read it like that leave it aside angel gabriel was instructed to go to breathe the soul into the virgin mary you know you work for a government you work for an enterprise you work for they give you instructions sometimes you don't even know then you go there, do this. You go and do it, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes they don't give you instructions in details. You go and do it. You were instructed to go. God had told the Virgin Mary earlier, we are going, I'm going to give you a kid. He's going to become a prophet. He gave her all the information. She was aware of that. But why Angel Gabriel came and he stood in front of her in a, with the physiognomy of a human being? He was instructed to breathe the soul. Go ahead, breathe the soul and go back. No. The monopole was in God's hand, transferred to Angel Gabriel. Angel Gabriel did not monopolize the willpower. He gave it to the Virgin Mary. She said... She said, I seek refuge in the Creator. And said She thought he was just a human being, a man who was going to approach in front of if he was in front of her. She said, and she sought, S-O-U-G-H-T, refuge in the merciful. She did not use another name because the refuge has a lot to do when you try to, you know, you externalize or you isolate yourself, where did you seek refuge? She sought refuge in the merciful, Rahman. Then he said, I came to give you, he told her, Then the secret of the password, she's aware of it and he is aware, he informed her about that. I'm going to give you a kid and I'm going to breathe the soul. Then she surrendered, but it's willingly. She surrendered to this kind of absorption of the spiritual, of the God spirit. Let's just imagine. If Gendul Gabriel had breathed the soul into the Virgin Mary without her being conscious and consciously, big chances she wouldn't have been pregnant. Big chances, if she had, she will, for instance, if she had been pregnant, the baby, the future baby, wouldn't have the spiritual power as he was instructed or he was meant for. Just a biological composition, she found the baby in her womb. Question, no. The conscience is from angel Gabriel to her conscience to the baby if the virgin or if angel Gabriel had bred the soul into the virgin Mary at the time when she was rejecting him the future baby would have rejected humanity later on look at this kind of teaching when she surrendered, as I said, when she opened herself to conceive the, f the baby, <clears throat> at that moment he breathed the soul. Look at what our main concern is. The willpower give him a chance to absorb, to think, to do. Getting back now from Hellas, from God to the angel to the prophet. Books before the Quran, they say God asked Abraham to slaughter his son. Well, there was no such a thing. God did not ask him, did not slaughter him. What he saw himself, 
slaughtering. And it was not so, just like, you know, like in the past. He said, I'm seeing, he used the progressive form. He said, my son, I've been seeing this. I am slaughtering you. And you know, a dream from a prophet is a prophecy. So the son, why, if you decided to do so, talking about prophet Abraham, peace be upon both, and Ishmael. If you were instructed or you wanted to do that, why don't you wait for him at the time when he is sleeping and you don't? You do it without causing him any pain in our when you know. It was divine inspiration, but again, he let him know. The willpower was transferred to the Ishmael. He said, Ya Bunay, inni ara fil manami anni adbahuka fandur madatara. See what you can do. This is what I've been seeing in a dream. He said, Oh Father, Ya Abati, in Arabic is softening the word. It's not daddy, it's not Ya Abati. And the word Yabune is kind of like softening the word with mercy, it's like cherishing. He say, Ya Abati Falma to Umaro, my father, do what you were instructed to do. You will find me patient. Look at the transfer. Well, all of us we know this. Getting back to the first questions that we put on the table, but we did not answer them. Well, there is a conflict of generation because of the technology that is different. You know, a kid is exposed to a reputation, to an audience. The first audience that is dominating his conscience is parenthood. Parenthood, they try to sculpt, sculpture themselves in the kid according to the reputation of their entourage. And they claim, my son, for your career, for your career, this is what they do. The mission, the true mission is to send the kid, he has more, his real identity is resulted from worship, from doing actions solely for God's sake by himself. I give an example. You show him certain things. Come with me, my son, I'm going to visit a sick person. Do you know why he visited him, my son? <clears throat> yeah, because he's sick. Yeah, that's true. But you be rewarded. God said the day of judgment, he said, My servant, I was sick. You did not s s visit me. My Lord, how can you be sick and you are the Lord of the universe? He said, My servant, Johnny, was sick. If you had visited him, you would have visited me. So you are visiting God. Then the day of judgment say, my servant, I was hungry and you did not give me food. You were able to do that. Same question. He said, how can you be hungry, our Lord? And you are the Lord of the universe. He said, my servant, name him. He was hungry. If you had fed him, you would have done that to me. By a lot of things like this, similar to this. Charity. You know, I do it in front of him. I do it in front of him. All I'm doing is I'm exposing certain things. The time, the most important time, the most important vital issue here is the time when you withdraw yourself and you let him. You don't pay attention to that. That's the time of his existence. He does sing for God's sake. I'm talking about worship. These words are to everybody. But if you got a chance to follow the five prayers a day, do you know what does that mean? Five prayers a day. You are controlled, characterized by the objective time. You are in a wagon, the locomotive of 
the objective time that's not your time that you are driven conducted seized for you to be able to withdraw yourself from this locomotive this wagon is to go to your subjective time that's your presence of mind your prayers you are seizing a segment of time from the universe that you attribute it to yourself when you are driven at time <laughs> that's not you I'm giving just the, about the prayers. Fasting, the same thing and the charity. You don't have a money. I don't have a money. But listen, a penny. You give it, the kids start giving this, start doing that, start doing these all kind of good things. He will find his uniqueness in this existence. No one can give it to him. That's not the parenthood about sending him to school and then speaking, it's a big deal. My son, I spend a lot of time, you know, for paying for your tuition and this. Well, that's fine. Fasting one day under God's supervision, nobody knows about him. Nobody knows about you when you go indoor and you eat or you drink, whatever. You do it. Here, that is your uniqueness start being manifested. You continue with this. It's not just, it's like limited time, some kind of a vocational training. <laughs> no, it's, it's all the time. Then you see the kid, he's going to find a harmony. The kid today, when he reached the age of puberty, you hear the word conflict of genesis. This is where he resides. Oh, so far, he finds himself transporting parenthood and then culture, cultural image, sculpture, and then nationalism. And then when he finds himself like a GI, what does it mean a GI? He's a GI, you know, American soldier. No, I'm not asking you that question. I'm saying, what does it stand for? Oh, that's a good question. I think it stands for government issue. Yeah, what does this mean? It's a government product. He was indoctrinated to be a product of the government. Well, listen, this is not a sword that this is the whole world is like this. The kid who is not raised under the creator's supervision to find himself, he will go into drugs to find himself in the world of mystery. This is what is weird about people, modern society. They say it's better to be in the real than to be in a mystery. They mean they criticize religion. Well, you're living in a mystery anyway. Why the person goes to the mystery to go to the mystery of the drugs? It's to be in conscience because consciousness does not exist. It becomes painful for him. Being conscious, he likes to live like an automaton on the one hand, and on the other hand, he criticized and he said, <clears throat> I, I want to do whatever I want. I don't want someone to command me. <laughs> the biggest threat to freedom is when the slave thinks that he is free. Listen, thank you for your attention. May the Lord protect you and give us guidance. And see you soon.